Pull up, man. I heard this nigga named Mar Matthew Maduco. Whatever the fuck his name. My little white boy that wants to be gangster now. Apparently, he just scamming another white boy. Somebody that he feels safe he could scam. Tommy G, man. He, 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 he scam a goofy, man. A, 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 a goofball, you know what I'm talking about? Somebody that, you know, easy to, easy, who ain't trying to, he ain't with the smoke, you know. Little Mabu really trying to stay in people, a little cool as hell. Dude trying to fit in. Hella weird for this, I don't, man. Let's see what he did, man. Let's see this for real. I'm using my phone right now to react to the video, you know, making a way out of nowhere, you heard. Have you heard of this kid? My name is Matthew DeLuca. I go to the collegiate school. He's been cosplaying for a while now. I can never snitch. That's all my kid. And he's currently one of the biggest drill rappers on earth who goes by the name Little Mabu. Unfortunately, this rich private school K Flock copycat scammed one of my best friends, Tommy G, for 11000 and. That's crazy because uh, that's not what the rap game is known for, you know? Like, so all niggas that got money in the rap game, you know? Like, we make fun of people like that, you know? Like, who got you and your dad, you know? Like, we don't look up to you, you know? $70. Low pockets, Mabu, you owe me $11,070. The guy is straight up a liar and a thief. But before we get <sighs> the exact details of how this guy scammed Tommy G, I want to... That's how, I mean, all the successful white people be. Come on now. That's what makes you want to beat his ass. Do easy to get his ass beat. He think he tough. I seen this before. This is what happened when Chief Keep came out. All the white boys thought they were tough. That's what my boo on right now. You Give know? you the backstory of this spineless little rat. Sit back, relax. Grab some popcorn and enjoy the history lesson. Lil Mabu, real name Matthew DeLuca, grew up in a five-bedroom, five-bath, 3,327-square-foot condo in one of the... See, that's why he exposed him like that for a rich nigga because in this rap game, bro, it's about um, starting from the bottom. Now you up here having the pride, being the man, standing on your, on your feet, bro. We can't look up to no a kid or fucking somebody that daddy bought his way in, you know what I'm talking about? Somebody that ain't gonna stand for nothing. Don't no bitch really want to be with no bitch, you know what I'm saying? Like, he not, he not him is what I'm trying to say, you know? Just areas of New York City. In his free time, he would escape to the Hamptons, where he would stay in his parents' 6,182 square foot mansion. This shit would piss off any nigga that came from the bottom real shit. We would test you because of this, and he know that, you know? The combined value of the properties is about $12 million. And as it turns out, his father, Peter DeLuca, is just as big... For real, that's why I just posted on my Twitter, uh... They see, they seen a picture of uh, Taylor Swift before and after. Like, now she's selling stadiums and shit. But before that, she was like, she, there was like two people in her, on, on her, you know, on in her concert type shit. And then it was captioned, never quit. And I put, uh, it costs money to chase your dream. Because this bitch, like, even if two people showed up, like, this shit ain't cheap, bro. Getting your fucking, getting the fucking uh, album made. That shit ain't cheap, fucking torn around that shit ain't cheap it costs money to chase your dream bro do i gotta go to man so so we gotta respect and we respect and really look up to motherfuckers who really came from the bottom got themselves up because think about it your daddy got you over here and you're talking all that shit oh yeah we finna hurt your ass real the speed, scamming man. douchebag as he is in 1987 Lil mabu's father married a woman named jane who he had a 13 month old child with one day she was holding the child when out of nowhere her town home collapsed crushing jane and killing she her child in her arms in the hospital she got a bunch of blood transfusions that ended up giving her hepatitis and she had to undergo 13 surgeries to repair her broken body she eventually received a four million dollar settlement for her losses and injuries during the collapse of her home. And while all this was going on, Lil Mabu's father was hard at work doing... Let me find out her white ass did that because they be having good ass money luck. The DeLucas do. Jane's husband, Peter, was manipulating her finances in a scheme to divorce what tragedy was, what is I don't believe that she knows. her and leave her in physical, emotional, and financial ruin. He sued her for divorce in 1996, and she was bullied into a settlement in 1998 that left her with the house and $1 million, with her husband holding on to the rest of the approximately $10 million estate. Obviously a scummy and fucked up situation, but it makes you wonder what kind of connections Lil Mabu's father has to pull off such a scheme. Now, we all know that Mabu's dad is a funeral director that from time to time gets in fist fights at his funeral home with people that are mourning but according to mabu he's also a lawyer pretty wild stuff right there but that's enough about his dad as i said before lil mabu is rich and he just finished his senior year at the collegiate school which is a 400 year old manhattan 
Dude, they, have you seen his dad? His dad looks so fucking white for him to be, be fighting. That's just a motherfucking, that's white privilege, bro. Somebody that never go to jail, never get in trouble for nothing. They did this shit. Might as well crack your ass. Like, ain't nothing gonna happen to me. Shit. This is crazy. Private school that costs $60,000 a year. And nowadays, he's a freshman in college scamming YouTubers for over $10,000. And you might be wondering, how did this all go down? Well, let's get into it. On April 3rd, Lil Mabu contacted Tommy G on Instagram about his newly released song, Big Dog Shit, saying, if you want to make the Big Dog Shit your theme song on YouTube, I can whitelist your channel to monetize on it. To which Tommy responds, ooh, that would be badass. Mabu answers back, bet, I got you. And Tommy goes ahead with their agreement. Tommy decided to put that song in a video that he knew would be one of his biggest. A video where he risked his life called The Most Wanted Drivers of New York. I say this just to emphasize that Tommy was doing Mabu a favor here. And at first, everything was cool. Tommy's video got about 2 million views in the first day and there was no copyright claims. But on the second day, Tommy gets a copyright claim from none other than Lil Mabu and Lil RT for the song Big Dog Shit that he used in the beginning of the video. This means all the ad revenue in the 30 minute plus video would go to Lil Mabu just for the 15 seconds of music he put in the beginning of the video. YouTube's copyright system is completely broken and fucked up, but that's not why we're here. Tommy reached out to the little Mabu and hopped on a phone call with him where he said that he was going to get his label empire to take care of it immediately, and if worse comes to worse, he would reimburse him out of pocket. Oh no, I got you on the bread. Somehow he has like this new accent that he's picked up since private school. Some just call me misunderstood. But some time passes and it still isn't clear that little Mabu is hit. No, bro, you just trying to fit in and play games like we see it a thousand times, bro. This nigga not about that life. As soon as he get in a fight, we gonna see this nigga can't even throw a punch like six nine six nine couldn't even fight fight at least in the airport fight corner. These niggas don't come from this real life background, bro. That's why when when the real nigga come up, they is trying their best not to let this nigga come up, cause they know he. That's him. He the real deal, real But well, the copyright man. claim, so Tommy G reaches out with this message. Mabu, just a heads up. At the moment, it's still your song that's getting claimed. Does RT have a piece of the song? I put your song in on good faith, so I'm looking for your help in getting this resolved. I'm an independent that works my ass off, so there's no way a label is going to get eight to $10,000 today for 15 seconds of a song in a 30-minute video. Please keep me posted. Mabu then responds with a screenshot of a text exchange from his manager saying, Okay, so Create is publishing rights on the song over Lil RT. Jimmy reached out out and told them we whitelisted it at the direction of Mabu and that they need to drop their claim ASAP, but are waiting to hear back at the moment. Tommy replied, can you send me a text when it's official slash done? To which Lil Mabu did not respond. The next day, Tommy said, just a heads up, still not cleared. Tommy, who is obviously fed up that some nerd is stealing his money on one of his biggest videos ever, manually removes the song from his video using YouTube's trim function, essentially restoring its monetization. He then reaches out to Lil Mabu's manager saying, I just cut it from the video. I'm not confident that C CMG will act on it quickly. I did the math and it's already cost me $11,070. That's fucking crazy. And still, Tommy got no response. This is a chart of Tommy's revenue on YouTube, showing the first day he was making money and the second day he made literally zero dollars. And then after that, on the third day, he removed the song and he was back to making money. But the money from the second day all went to Lil Mabu and Lil RT. At this point, Tommy wants to be reimbursed from that second day of revenue that was stolen by Lil Mabu and his bullshit copyright claim. So five days later, Tommy reaches out to Lil Mabu's manager again, saying, What are our options at this point for recouping what's been lost? Are we able to build CMG or Empire for a marketing expense? The manager responds. Empire said it's out their hands. They sent an email to them to resolve this matter, but he said if any action is to be taken, it needs to go towards CMG. He said they already have cases that they are dealing with on the same matter. Saturday, April 20th, Tommy G reaches out to Lil Mabu once more and says, I put your song in the video in good faith because you assured me it would be cleared. 11 grand might not be a lot of money to you, but it's a lot of money to me. When I raised this concern with you, you delegated me to your manager and did not even find Find it important enough to respond to me. Is this how you do business? Hours later at 2.30 in the morning, Little Mabu responded, Almost got kicked out of school this week, LOL. They got me on RICO of conduct violations. No, my team has been working on trying to find a solution for this. Planned on touching bases with you after weekend, and 11K is money to me also. The smug little prick isn't even saying sorry. He's having this fake little fairy tale RICO of... Right, dude's only thinking about himself. That's why he's still talking about himself. Chat bot like, bro, I don't give a fuck about you getting spelled, nigga. Where the fuck my money at? But since I only think about me, I think my boo is on drugs. I'm telling you, bro. They be off. Right. Purpose, draw bro. angry donut. Draw happy Plus, turtle. Who the fuck goes to conduct violation? Who the fuck? 
Man, man who the, how's your dad boy gangster to you, my boo? Real spit, how the fuck you take your motherfucking old ass dad to your music video thing? Your dad wants you to be a gangster. It's like, it's like them white girls that want their daughters to be wholesome. So they're okay with like taking them pictures where they naked, like weird shit like that. Like they best friends, bro. I have my parents, not my best friend. That's play, man. Shit, do 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 a cornball for that. Real spit. It's in his dorm room. This guy even cosplays like a gangster over text message. What the hell? Oh my god, no way. That is a typical white boy body, a white boy. He ain't never done one push up in his motherfucking life type shit. And if he do, he ain't doing it tomorrow or the next day. He'll probably do it that very same day, and that is it. This dude will get his ass beat real quick. He's all intimidation in head. This is all head games, bro. This nigga will be too easy to fight, bro. He look like a Fortnite player. You know? Tommy responds, I hear you, amigo. That's serious shit. I understand life gets busy. I just wanted to make sure this issue has your attention. Let's touch base this week. Tommy waited four days and still no response. So we texted him again. Mabu, I know you have good intentions and the situation was an accident. How about this? We meet in the middle and call it a day. We build empire slash you for marketing. Tommy waits three more days, still no response. So Tommy sends another message. This will be my final text to you about this. The ball is in your court to take action in a way you see fitting to your ethics. Tommy got no response. So as of recording this, it has been about an entire month since Lil Mabu robbed Tommy G of $11,070. He has done nothing to rectify. the situation and seems perfectly content screwing over a friend that is very close to me and the reason i'm making this video is because tommy does not deserve to be robbed yeah man he don't give a fuck about around here he a white rich man the fuck he don't give a fuck about shit nigga and on top of that he trying to be black he trying to be gangster he probably trying to impress niggas like oh i just finesse this nigga look dark weird and they'll do that shit because he a lame ass nigga who'll show you that like that ass and then people will be like damn this nigga might be really making money he just robbed somebody for a 100k i need to make moves with him yeah because he can hide behind his little innocent rich boy face but now since this is out it's gonna be kind of harder to stay niggas you know like this lil mabu is a disingenuous fraud and so much of his image is built up off being an independent white kid that did it all himself and frankly as annoying as the situation is it's hilarious how much of a liar Matthew really is. Last month in his DJ Academics interview, Little Mabu was asked if he was signed, to which he replied this. So when you put out music, um, what's the entity that it comes out through? Young Genius Academy. But is the, you're not like Just universal? Why is it? No. You're not, you're not universal. No, I'm not. No, I'm you're not. independent. I'm independent. I'm not really? in the label system, no. And in one of his most popular songs, Mathematical Disrespect, he says this. And in a sit-down video he posted to his own YouTube channel, he said this. I don't have a manager. I'm not signed to a label. And it's really funny he's lying like that because he is very clearly signed to a distribution deal with Empire. And not only does he have a manager, but he has a team of over 14 people that he had to talk to when this whole copyright claim situation all went down. They sent me a screenshot of a group chat called Empire with 14 people. It doesn't seem very independent to me. But surprise... Yeah, dude would lie just like Dolph and Young Dolph talking about he independent. Yeah, the fuck right he was. Everybody want to act like they come from the bottom and did it they, they damn self, you know. This scamming situation isn't Tommy G or my first time interacting with Lil Mabo. In August of 2021, Lil Mabo was trying to blow up on the internet and he was having his Instagram meme page friends reach out to a bunch of YouTubers trying to pay them $80 to put his song King of the World in their videos. I ended up saying no because I thought the song was absolutely shit. But Tommy ended up putting the song in one of his videos we did together called Hell Us Rapping in the Hood Part 7. Here you can see way back in 2020, 21, Tommy G linking a little Mabu song in his description. I'm bringing this up because it's a pretty good symbolization of how Mabu got to the top of the rap game. He's a rich kid who bought his way into the industry with his dad's money and an elementary understanding of marketing. He's not that original. He's not some genius. He's literally 6'9 with a millionaire daddy. Don't get swayed. Stay 10 toes and focus and just be calculated. Be very calculated and be intentional with everything you do. I want to ask you this, Matthew Peter DeLuca. Is scamming Tommy G someone who did you a favor, staying 10 toes down by your standards? Not to mention you... 6'9", that's a tall-ass white boy. Personal... I promise, Tommy, you reimburse him out of pocket if anything went wrong in the copyright department. Look at how Lil Mabo scoffs at the idea of getting paid $15,000 for a single show. What are you getting for, for a show these days? $15,000. Hmm? Fifteen. Probably. Oh, okay, okay. Not to... Probably. The 
first of all, this nigga be capping. Look at this nigga. He probably wants to tell him what to say right now. Look at all these niggas that are kind of dangerous and kind of not dangerous. Just enough for his daddy. So you can be around his daddy. The idea you know? of getting paid $15,000 for a single show. What are you getting for, for a show these days? $15,000. Hmm? 15 Probably what? Oh, okay, okay. And that's give you the low ball to kind of go where you're at with it. Clearly, this money that he outright stole from Tommy means nothing to him. But I know for a fact it does mean something to Tommy. So I say we try to get it back to him. And here's the thing. Tommy isn't going to pocket the money himself. He's going to use all the proceeds of this GoFundMe he created to fund youth wrestling in his hometown of Milwaukee. So if you want to support Tommy's GoFundMe, you can find the link in the description. I just wanted to close this presentation with some conclusions and takeaways we can't let this little fucking dork screw over one of the good guys of youtube and to me this whole situation is not only indicative of youtube's broken copyright system but also indicative of how shitty tommy g gang because the other white boy he more trying to fit in trying to gangster uh, when uh g keep and all the white people came out that's what he on right now when people Come can be now. they get rich off social media thank you all for watching this ass nigga need to get his ass whooped if you know if he ain't, if he, if people don't stop him, he gonna fucking end up shooting somebody. That's basically the only thing he can do, cause he can't fight, you know? Alright, man, I'm finna end the whoop here, man. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, comment your favorite part, be able to tap the notification bell, turn your notifications on if you guys wanna donate my channel, okay? So that's gonna be in the bottom of the link description. Alright, man, stay tuned. We got big things coming up on this channel. I'm Romano Rodriguez, and I'll see you guys on the next episode of In the Day in the Life of Welcome a Rapper Squad.